So, hi, my name's Jill Barton. I'm the founder of Egypt Equinade, which is the property we're on at the moment. I'm from Australia and I have, uh, I live here. I have, uh, my family is back in Australia and I live here on my own. And so I just always loved horses. And when we came here, we actually learnt that uh, during the war, which was 100 years ago, our troops from Australia brought 100,000 horses with us to fight in the war. And when they left, they left the horses behind. They left 10,000 horses behind, the ones that had survived the war. And so the horses that are here today, a lot of them would be actually descended from our Australian horses. So we also felt like we had a commitment to these horses, that we'd been left, they'd been left behind once and we shouldn't be leaving them behind and forgetting about them again because they really need help here. Yeah, especially the fact that they mostly belong to poor people so, and they can't afford vet treatment and they, they don't know how to treat, treat illnesses or wounds or anything. So. أنا شغال هنا من حوالي أقل من سنة مسؤول عن الأوت بيشنت والإن بيشنت حاليا إحنا هنا بنستقبل أي وركينج هورس أو دونكي أو ميول إحنا عندنا مشكلة كبيرة في مصر هنا ما زال العلاجات التقليدية اللي اتلغت في العالم كله الكاوية والخزام والممارسات اللي هي ممكن بتقتل بتقتل أحيانا صاحب الحيوان لو اتصاب حصلت له إصابة وبدأ يعرج بيروح جايب دبارة ومدخلها مثلا من تحت الجلد فوق المفصل المصاب وبيحصل عنده عدوى بيجيله تيتانوس بيجيله أنيروبيك بكتيريا بيحصل له سيبتسيميا أو بيحصل له تيتانوس وبيموت my husband and my husband Warren and I both came to Egypt in 2013. We came here to volunteer with a horse charity. Um, we stayed for a month in the pyramid area, and we saw the condition of the horses and the animals in general in Egypt, but especially in the pyramid area. And we just really wanted to come back and do something more to help. Um, you know, the working horses here usually belong to, you know, fairly poor people, so they can't really afford veterinary care and they don't have any knowledge about looking after them either. So this horse um, came from a, um, probably a farmer or a katia, and as you can see, he's like in a really emaciated condition. All his ribs are showing. This is kind of a typical case of, you know, a, a person owning this horse who can't actually afford to keep the horse or to feed him or look after him properly, doesn't know anything about him. So instead of being able to just treat one small thing when it first starts, it wait, they wait till it gets really bad. This horse has been here already probably for a few weeks, so he's a lot better than when he came in. But he'll take a long time to get better. And obviously in this condition he can't work, but the people don't even realise this and they keep working them until actually they drop because they just can't go on any further because they're, they're just not educated in how to look after the animals and they have nowhere to go for advice even until they find us. So this is kind of a typical case of ignorance and neglect, this horse. Of course, as a person, if one of them has a small one, he can go quickly to the doctor and he can get what he feels or something. The animal, 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 the animal. This girl um, was brought here by her owner. They were in a um, traffic accident with a tuk-tuk. Uh, she was pulling the cart and the tuk-tuk ran into her. And the owner was actually injured in the accident as well. But he wanted to make sure that she would be okay before he went to hospital. So he brought her here and we were telling him, don't worry about the horse, just go take yourself to hospital. Um, but it was really sweet because before he left, he sort of walked up to her and went like this. And I could see he was just like talking to her, like, you know, it'd be okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see now she's fully healed. She can go back to pulling his cart and helping him earn a living. And um, he's, he's uh, recovered as well. So, you know, it's all good in the end. But if we weren't here, this horse probably would have such bad injuries. She wouldn't be go able to go back to work because they need, you know, careful nursing to recover from a, a huge injury like the one she had. And she's a real sweetie as well, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> we like helping horses like this. Hey. Okay, so um, the way that we get our funding here, we initially we funded everything ourselves. 
um, for a few months. And then as people started to know us around the world, we started people started making donations. We're a registered charity in Australia. Um, so uh, we, we also did a sponsorship scheme where people could pay the rent on one of the horse boxes for a year. And then each person that sponsored a horse box got their name and a little sign in front of the box. Um, so it's a really nice way that people contributed to, to help because we know the rent's paid on that box for a year so we can continue to use it. Yet yeah, we also have um, some dogs on the property. They were, uh, we share the property with my landlord so the dogs actually belong to the landlord but they kind of just intermingle with all of us. And there's also a lot of cats on the property. There's also um, a lot of poultry on the farm that belongs to the landlord. So we have geese that you can probably hear in the background. They have chickens. Um, sometimes they have um, turkeys. They have pigeons and rabbits. And so we have kind of all these animals intermingling. <laughs> the donkeys, the, the horses, the dogs and cats and chickens and monkeys. Um, and the, there's a big problem here with the wildlife trafficking in Egypt. You know, it's actually illegal to have monkeys or to keep any wildlife. But, you know, because the laws are a bit lax, um, people do. And, and the pet shops are selling them all the time. Yeah, so really it's better if people don't rescue animals from pet shops because the pet shop just goes and replaces the animal anyway. So you're just encouraging them to, to keep, keep the wildlife trade going. Um, so if there's anybody watching this that are interested in helping the animals in Egypt, um, for one you can just talk to the owners yourself. Uh, you can do things like um, a lot of the horses have strings and chains on their nose. So you can talk to the owners about how this is going to affect the horse and injure the horse. Um, we also hand out noseband covers for instance. If you see somebody whipping their horse you can just talk to them about what they're doing and um, you know, how would they like to have this done to them? You know, they don't need to whip their horse. If the horse is too weak to work for them, then they should rest their horse. So you can just talk to people yourself. If you want to help us, um, always, you know, we um, need donations, financial donations, of course. So if you want to do fundraising, we have some schools sometimes do fundraising. And then you can donate it to our charity in Australia, which is the, you know, they actually fund us here in Australia, I mean, in Egypt. Um, there's not really a lot of lot that people can do as in volunteering here. Um, the, some ladies make noseband covers, for instance, so things like that are good. But you need to be you need to have some experience with horses and or to be a vet to be able to volunteer actually physical help here. But um, it's more about raising awareness and raising funds is the things that that people could do to help us to help the animals and to help the people.